There we go. It's always good to start with a laugh. All right, guys. What's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker. This is episode number 136. Today, we're going to be talking about building a music website using WordPress. Let's go around the room real quick, get everyone introduced. Chris, tell us about yourself. Hey, my name is Chris Lemma, and you can find me at chrislemma.com. I'm also on Twitter, and I run the North County San Diego Meetup, which means tomorrow. And tomorrow we're meeting at my place to do some extra networking stuff. So uh, it's a lot of fun to do that kind of stuff around here. And soon I will be speaking at YoastCon and then WordCamp Miami. So everyone's showing up at your house? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we're doing the meetup here tomorrow. In the pool? Yeah, Not pretty much. Pool. With the game. The game. <laughs> Very cool. Dave, what about you, my friend? Hi, I'm Dave. I'm a software engineer, CTO at Spectrum Tech, where we build e-commerce solutions and custom plugins. Awesome. What about you, Sarah? Hi, I'm Sarah Default. I'm the production manager at Seek Interactive, and in my former life, I worked with a lot of bands and did their websites and all of their digital. Awesome. What about you, Say? Um, my name is Say Reed, and I do WordPress, make WordPress, love WordPress, and I'm also in a band, so I do this other band stuff too, not for other people, but for me. Well, for my sister. Anyway, let's continue. Steve, are you with the band? <laughs> I'm not. I'm the drummer. <laughs> um, I, uh, my name is Steve Zanket, and I am the founder of Zeke Interactive, and I run the OC WordPress Meetup, and we do not have a meeting tonight. Awesome. Suzette, tell us about Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm Suzette Frank. I am a WordPress freelance professional. I teach with Girl Develop It, and you can find me on Suzette.pro. Awesome. Topher, tell us about Hi. My name is Topher. I work with Easy Digital Downloads, writing uh, documentation and going to WordCamps. <laughs> if you uh, want to see me at a WordCamp, I'll be at Miami and Kansas City and Columbus, and then I don't know after that. Or you can come to Grand Rapids for our meetup this Thursday. Awesome. Is this house? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me Jason Tucker on Twitter, and I blog over at WPMedia.pro and JasonTucker.us. So, band website. Let's talk a little bit about that. So, you know, there's there's a bunch of you know different little pieces that need to be need to actually show up on one of these band websites for people to figure out where you're going to be playing at, what your music is, and uh, what else. I think we should call it, and uh, to make this distinction, not just a band website, but a music website. Sure. Um, we were Much talking about that earlier. SEO. Well, uh, yeah, better for SEO, but also uh, band is, you know, more of a limited thing. But this kind of topic and the needs of musicians for websites is are very similar. Whether they're in a band or they're, you know, a concert violinist, there's still similar things that they need to uh, have on their site. There's a consistency there. So I think you can lump all of that music stuff in together. Definitely. Like what? What do they need to What say? are those things? What are the things? Hey, well, here's the thing. This <laughs> is what this is what things. musicians really need. And I mean there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that they need in general. But the main thing, and I know this is like super, your technology needs. super out of the box, <laughs> is they need this is like this is like crazy. It's super, super niche. But they need people to hear their music. What? No. What? what? I know, right? I don't that's believe crazy. it. That's you crazy. That's so that's so sense of common sense. I know. It's so simple, in fact, that you would be surprised how many people forget about that. Yeah, or they so, get or they get bogged down in details and okay, have to try and so, make it happen. So how Yeah, so let's ask Sarah. So Sarah, <laughs> tell us everything you know and go. Um, I mean, I like using WordPress for band websites because it's super easy to to keep things updated. Um, most bands, when they're they spend a lot of time on tour or otherwise not sitting in front of a computer, if they're doing it right, um, so the that that WordPress is so mobile friendly. You can have a WordPress app that helps you update all of your stuff, um, unless you have a custom post type or something like that. In which case, the WordPress app cannot help you. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's easy for them to keep things updated and, and make posts from the road and things of that nature. As far as streaming goes, though, because that's really... So, you know, we play a gig, 
and then everyone comes up afterwards and they want to know where they can get the music online and they don't necessarily even want to buy it sometimes they buy it but the number of people who actually do not have CD players in their computers or anywhere near that is actually quite astonishing these days so you know it's you know beyond the idea of what are you actually selling them at a gig which is one thing you know merch wise but you want to be able to continue that relationship and so when you send them or you know you're just out there you send people to your website um, they need to be able to hear your music and yes. I think okay. for the most part um, non-native uh, solutions to that are generally where everyone's going it, for example SoundCloud or Bandcamp uh, which have embeddable um, you know little widget guys that allow you to uh, stream that and keep it consistent with your band clamp. Band clamp? <laughs> band clamp. Like band that. clamp. Yeah. Band camp and your sound cloud. A whole different kind of site. Yeah. Well, this, which is I mean, important I like, because... Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying I like, I like SoundCloud a lot for that, especially since their player is HTML5, so you can play it on a mobile phone. Um, yeah. But I also like using Spotify as a streamer um, just because then it keeps all of your plays in one place. Um, but then, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of hurdles to using Spotify. I also like using YouTube. YouTube it seems to be moving towards being a streaming service. To be totally honest, like the way that my friends and I used to sit around like somebody's record player and we'd hang out, kids are now hanging out around their laptops watching videos on YouTube. True fact. YouTube's the first place I go if I'm looking for a song, one that I haven't heard yeah. in a long time or something new. YouTube's the place I go before any of the audio streaming sites. Which is easy enough, you know, given WordPress is in bed and whatnot. The problem is, is there's a lot of bands, especially smaller bands, who don't have a copious amount of video on, uh, because, you know, it takes production and all that stuff. So they either have, you know, lyric videos or things like that, or they don't have those at all. It's so Yeah, those, in which case, and I think that's a mistake. You can just put, like, one... A major mistake. You can put, like, one photo up and then have, like, an audio thing going, and there yep. you go. YouTube. That's yeah, YouTube. it's really yeah. easy to make those now on YouTube or just different services. They have a lot of different software where you can make slideshows and put it to music. But yeah, I think fans should at least be doing that. Yeah, so I'm, built I'm video looking, editor. So I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at the codex page on WordPress.org under embeds. And so natively supported in WordPress is SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, all the things you guys have mentioned so far. Is that the way um, you do it? Yes. Yeah, uh, my, my problem with Spotify is that a lot of times you have to have an account or be signed in. I don't know about their streaming because uh, that's always just been a hurdle to me. I like the ones that you don't have to sign in or have an account with, which is SoundCloud and Bandcamp. You don't have to um, have that. The thing about Bandcamp that gives it a little edge over SoundCloud is that people can buy the song directly from the player. Okay. So um, the th good thing about SoundCloud is that kind of what Sarah was saying about the the tracking the streams is that uh, it, it notes how many times your song has been played and whatnot. So you get, you know, credit, not really credit, but you get like, you know, credibility. Yeah. Because like, if you're if, if you're trying to, to do anything more with your band, like if you're trying to get like a new booking agent involved or licensing spots or like anything that could kind of help your band do something else, um, you, you need to be able to prove how much people like your band. So mm -hmm. if you're linking to a bunch of different places and then you're spreading out all of the, the numbers of plays that you're getting, you're actually hurting yourself in the long run. So Bandcamp is not natively supported inside of WordPress, but it can still be embedded in, in your page. I'm, I'm yeah, sure. it has its own you know, embed code that you just pop in there and you can, you can make. But the, the benefit to that one, and I, I totally agree, though, with what Sarah's saying. Um, I'm actually in the process right now of, for uh, my band, or my sister's band, Alicia Murphy, um, solidifying all that and getting it all in one spot. I think that's actually something that's really difficult for musicians, is having that kind of um, one place where things are happening. And the thing about um, not doing native embeds or putting in MP3s or anything like that on your actual site is because you don't get that credit and there is no tracking. So it's kind of a waste um, because you're, even if people are sitting there streaming, you don't get that, that credibility. And so you basically have to use a third-party service in order to keep, that, keep those stats coming. Not to mention the benefit of saving on bandwidth hits to your site. Yeah. Yeah. The the thing the thing that I've noticed some artists do is they keep waiting for the perfect album or LP. They're waiting for the perfect music video that they've started but haven't finished. They keep waiting 
to push their content online. And uh, and then what's amazing, right? And and it's totally changed over the last ten years. Um, but uh, you're you know while you're waiting, someone else has recorded you, right? Like you're you're playing somewhere, and someone has recorded it on on their you know iPhone or what have you. And uh, you, and and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, someone else just published my song on YouTube with their own you know, video or their own stuff, right? And so they're aggregating views that aren't yours, right? So what I what I tell artists when I speak to them, which most of the time I also say, just go talk to Sarah. But if I'm if I'm talking to an artist, I'll say, get it online fast. Get it on right away. Don't wait for it to be perfect. Get you your first. content get your get your channel going on YouTube just for the example. Record, saying that to an artist is like what are you even talking about? Like, why would I do that? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the antithesis of the instinct of the musician or yeah. an artist in general. Yeah, and when you're and when you're going it on your own, I mean, I and Chris is totally correct. Um, like actually, I mean, this isn't quite music, but there's a podcast I really like called Welcome to Night Vale, and they're like usually like number one in the podcast list on iTunes, but they didn't have any of their podcast audio on YouTube, so they hadn't registered anything. So some other person went on, uploaded all of their podcast content to YouTube videos and started claiming it and running ads against it. Oh, oh my. Yep. So if you, if you okay. don't, if if you you don't, don't start locking content, stuff down, no yeah, you've got to, yeah. if you want control of your, of your content, you've got to be the one controlling it, basically. Yep. And I, I, have, a, I have a good friend of mine who uh, has literally lost um, years of of content, original content that she's even heard played on the radio, that is hers. Oh no! It's her voice, wow. and it's published under someone else's name. Is that right? legal? Um, no, but it's really difficult to navigate once it's out there, right? Yeah. So, so um, I I I give them advice, but given that I'm not an artist, I send them to Sarah <laughs> after I've given them the advice. Right? You know how like the, the the poor man's copyright is mailing something like mailing a letter to yourself yeah. with yes. postmark and everything. I, I feel like the digital version of that now is being the first person to register your stuff on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, that makes wow. sense. Yeah. So. Um, in addition to streaming, which is obviously uh, and, and access to the songs, there's also the component of, which is why I mentioned Bandcamp, because you can purchase the songs directly from um, the uh, the Bandcamp streamer, which you can't do from SoundCloud um, or Spotify, because you can do it on streaming. You can purchase on SoundCloud. Yeah, there's a there's a download button. It's, you can download. Little, I don't think you can little, buy it. No, you. I mean, uh, there's a link out to an external buy button. Yeah, it's not as it's not as 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 part of it for right. purchasing, and there's right. not like you know whatever. So SoundCloud and Spotify are more streaming based as opposed to Bandcamp, which can be more more merch based. But speaking of that, so selling your music is also an important component of that, or selling merch. And there's a lot of stuff um, that you know and, that and buy that. and buy merch to the rest <laughs> of you. She means merchandise. Merchandise, yeah. <laughs> so you know, t-shirts, CDs. Extra stuff, which is a lot of the time where um, you know artists can make actual money, as opposed to the songs, which everyone thinks should be free and streamable, and are stream free and streamable if you are following Sarah's advice and putting all your stuff on YouTube. You need to be able to follow that up with some sort of uh, physical purchase. I think that um, there's not, you know, something like WooCommerce and whatnot. Those are a little, oftentimes, a little too um, robust, but they work great. Sarah, do you have any? Um, Things that you like to use for that, for selling. I mean, just plain old WooCommerce works a lot. I mean, a lot of the bands that I worked with um, have merch deals with other companies, so we would just have to link out to their <clears throat> whatever service that they were using. What's that WooCommerce? Uh, or sorry, that Woo theme that is specific to bands. Is that still around? Oh yeah, I think it was called like Unsigned or something like that. Yeah, right. I used it yeah. once. It was cool. There's there's a there's a lot of themes out there that'll do that will try and do some some of this, but um, sometimes say the fastest thing is if you don't have a deal with the people that are producing your merchandise and it's just you doing your own thing, um, you don't even have to get as fancy as a huge e-commerce platform. You can uh, put you know register the items on PayPal, get buttons, get sell buttons. 
and yeah. stick them stick them on a page, right? Uh, yeah. Put you, you put photo. That is definitely the easiest way to go about it without yeah. having. Well, but then you get into the idea, you know, of inventory management and whatnot. And if you are doing your own fulfillment as a band, you do need to make sure that you have your inventory situa situated. And um, that, you know, kind of speaks to the idea of the in-store, you know, kind of that having the, not in-store, but, you know, at gigs, having a unified system. Um, I don't think, has WooCommerce actually pushed out that POS Nope. There are others that have done something, um, but a different hosted e-commerce platform that integrates to WordPress, it also integrates to Facebook, is uh, ECWID. E Equid. Equid. If that's how you say it. Yeah, Equid. That's how I say it. Yeah, they're, they're, a, uh, they're, they're local. Yep, and they, uh, they are doing stuff where you can take and load up your inventory, load up your images and, and uh, prices and everything else in the catalog, and then you can drop that wholesale into your WordPress page. You can drop it into your Facebook page. Um, so for artists, that may be of interest to them because it does do a little bit more than uh, just a PayPal button, right? Hmm. I would be oh, remiss okay. to uh, not point out that Easy Digital Downloads would do this very well also. For uh, digital content. Yeah, but well, not not for selling necessarily like t-shirts, right? They sure. do they do yeah, have do some t-shirts just fine. They have they have some you digital. You sell digital t-shirts. Digital they sheet have, music. I don't they know. Have, yeah. They have EDD has some simple shipping uh, that now works for it, so you can do some simple stuff. And I think I wrote an article about it at one point Ooh, about I bet. Um, I bet. selling. Uh, Selling your, you know, digital music as well as other stuff on uh, EDD, so it is possible. Um, it's not the first place you think of, but it is possible. That's it's not the first place you think of because it's in the name that it's the digital download. Yeah, <laughs> well, the biggest problem with that would be the shipping and other stuff. The biggest problem with that would be the shipping, and you can do that one of two ways: either use that new shipping module that works with it, or you can include the shipping price in the product price. So just say it's free shipping, but add a little bit to cover the shipping cost of the T-shirt, and then you just have to manage inventory. Yeah. yeah. It's a good way to get on board quick. Quick onboarding. So uh, what about gigs? I was actually just researching uh, this. I'm in the process of redoing uh, our band website, and um, so I, was, I have currently um, all our shows and whatnot are done through a custom post type, and I was looking at um, plugins that... Um, could uh, replace that for, for management and gig press is the kind of like the number one out there um, which is it actually has a lot of cool features um, have you used it Sarah? I have and I ended up ditching it because um, there what I was running into is I had to enter tour dates in up to three different places you know there's the website oh. there was the Facebook there was um, a mobile app for one of the bands I was working with, and it was making me completely insane. So I ended up, I, I was between Songkick and Bands in Town, and I ended, up, in town is great. I ended up going Bands in Town just because they're, they're a system for alerting people that you've announced a gig, you know, not only your own fans, but people who might like your music. Um, and, and, you know, it just, like, when I post a tour date for any of the, like, for a band, um, the fans who have already liked the page and are using the app get a Facebook notification. Which is oh, awesome, unless you post all of your gigs at the same time, in which case everyone now hates you. We actually well, It's geo-targeting. <laughs> so so not, does that mean so that your you fans, your, fans don't, your fans don't get a notification for every single one of your gigs. They only get it if they're like within 25 miles of the gig. Right, so if you're playing cool. locally, though, you put them all up at once. Well, if you're playing that many times in one in one month, then you've got some other problems with uh, overplaying your market. But I digress. <laughs> um, so what, what about yeah. displaying the stuff on the website, though? Like from those services, do those services provide embed codes and all that sort of stuff? And oh yeah, there's a plugin um, for bands in town. A WordPress. A WordPress plugin. Sorry, my my intern is is being unruly. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a plugin. It's great. I mean, it basically just like drops like a you know JavaScript thing into your page, and you you actually control all of the dates using the, uh, their Facebook app on Facebook, or using their manager app on your phone. Oh, cool! And it looks yeah. like this one's built by them. 
Um, yeah. Now I will say I have used GigPress, and um, it totally makes sense if you are managing in multiple channels. The frustration that that would be if you're just starting out and your first channel is WordPress, and you're just you have someone dedicated to doing something on the web um, or on your on your site itself. GigPress does actually work, um, and uh, um, I was a little hesitant, right, because the the version number that I pulled down looked like it hadn't been updated in a while. And uh, and yet I still got um, I still got more more updates and everything like they they did they did run refreshes so they're still committed to moving that thing along which is nice right every now and then you get you work with a plugin that you've never seen before and you're like I don't know if this is gonna stay updated um, but but it was working so that's that's nice yeah. and it's actually a scary thing to use one type of thing like that if you don't know it's gonna be updated and you're putting all your shows in that and whatnot yeah. you need that data you have to have those shows listed somewhere so for booking and whatnot you have to demonstrate where you've been playing um, so that is really important that kind of keeping it that's why I haven't switched to a plugin yet because I'm I'm uh, uh, unsure about them yeah gig gig press gig press worked in it and it uh, it was it was doing refreshes so that was nice my only issue that I found when looking at it this time with gig press is that it's um, separate posts so if you you can't add in like show flyers or show details, and so it does it through a related post. It's got the the date, and then it has a related post where you can create a post that has all just a regular post that has the stuff in there. Um, and I thought kind of that duplication uh, was unnecessary. So that's that's been giving me pause um, because then you've got two posts for each gig in theory, and that's kind of that same rep, rep, repetition thing that where you're posting in all these multiple spots and. Really, there's who has time for that? No one has time for that, especially musicians. All right, I got something new to throw in. Sweet. Uh, the other day, Brady Virtue released a new theme. Uh, I see it on GitHub. I don't know if it's anywhere else called Audio Theme. And the thing that caught my eye is that it will play an MP3 across multiple page loads without using Flash. Oh, that's cool. Oh, like one of those little long, things long, long. at the bottom of the screen. He's um, he's had that out. He's had that out so for like, a while, hasn't he? So like SoundCloud in a way, how SoundCloud does it. Yeah, he, well, he did a big announce the other day. He may have had early releases, but um, for a long, long time, that was the big argument for Flash from musicians. So like, well, I want my music to play all the time, and I don't want it to change every time they click and all that stuff. Now this theme still has, uh, I don't know, a quarter second skip when you change pages, which. It's kind of annoying, but um, it's the most important it's part a, of the song, man. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but uh, it's it's still it's just, it's a big step in the right direction, and I think we can solve this problem eventually. So, how do I embed my Napster library? <laughs> <laughs> well, you get some Scotch tape and you put am it I, on your screen. <laughs> am, I, am I dating myself? Sorry. <laughs> Don't answer. Um, the other thing, so in addition to. Um, that's the, the streaming, audio streaming and whatnot, uh, is, uh, you know, just capturing, you know, fan, fans' emails. That's, you know, really the most important thing for most small business websites. And, of course, fans are small businesses. Musicians are small businesses. Yes. Um, fans put way too much faith in social media, and they shouldn't. They yeah. really do. There's, a, there's a, an amazing um, value in the email list and directly connecting with your fans. And I think that, um, I mean... Mailchimp's for me an obvious go-to because it's free, you know, up to two thousand people, and so especially if you're starting out, that's that's the way to go. Um, but I, I think it's interesting how many bands don't have that on their site in general. They're just like, go like us on Facebook, and then it's like, you know, there's no there's no connection there. So that's what. Yeah, the more that, important that's things. a good point because the Facebook stuff, it's like you can have three thousand fans. But only like five percent of those fans are actually seeing your updates, which I really yeah. have a bug about Facebook with that because it's like it's only getting worse. They're yeah, changing there, and they can't access them unless they pay. Yeah, it's and only the, one to two percent right now, admittedly really? from Facebook of organic views. In the, yeah. So if you have a hundred fans, one or two people are going to natively see your post unless you boost it. So and, just go, and, just, go buy, always, just go buy a bunch of likes. That works no, out. The, yeah. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. No, I mean, you're you're like, do not even joke about that. Okay, that's not funny. Right. <laughs> No, I mean, in, in there is, there, the, the number of, of conversations I've had with musicians were like, well, just buy the links. It's fine. It's like, buy no, it's not fine. 
There's so many reasons that's not fine, and in fact, I've had a lot of uh, I've had a lot of conversations about this type of thing with various bookers, and uh, the more intelligent bookers will actually not just book you based off whether or not you know you've got you know 15,000 fans, but they'll actually just look take a take a gentle look at your page, you know, and see if this post that theoretically went out to 15,000 fans got in, got liked by you know more than 10 people, and if it didn't, they know that you're just basically full of crap, and then they don't you know. Which no one in LA is. We're all. There's no, we're all there's no bands that are like faking it. That how do you? How, one second. <laughs> I, I think we have we have Gently. folks we have folks that are watching or listening, and they're going to come up with the same question I just had. How does one gently look at your page? <laughs> I was wondering. Great <laughs> <laughs> right, care. No, no, right, wait, 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 wait. Like this. Like this. I mean, I mean, I mean, briefly. Steve, that doesn't brilliant. feel very gentle. No. Right? <laughs> the number, one, gentle. <laughs> the number one problem I've had with artists is <laughs> regarding their site design. They all want their site to look like album art from the 70s. You know, they want it to be 18 inches wide and 18 inches tall and a piece of art. And then they want to be able to change it easily on a day-to-day -day basis. So what's the problem? And what's, it what's, your, what's, your, what's your issue? I'm, I'm missing. <laughs> <laughs> the issue is it makes me itch. <laughs> well, I think the the latest There's trend in the band that. is basically you know giant picture of face you know with some streaming and whatnot. I but I kind of hate that like design anyway. Um, but uh, that's that's kind of the current trend. I think that using a website for uh, a theme for bands is probably not a great choice for bands in general because they're just they're like built-in cliches. And they also put a lot of the goodies into custom post types, which you then can't update on your phone, which is useless to most bands on the road. And then you yeah. can't change themes, or if you change themes, you lose all your stuff, like all your shows, which oh, I think is something yeah. that's it's really important for bands to be aware of that, that if you're using a theme that's geared directly for musicians or bands, and then you switch themes, all of that stuff that you've put into that theme is going to be lost to you. So if you're putting your shows in there, if you're putting any data that you need to keep it over the over the long run, which you do in the most for the most part for this, then you're just you're just screwed. Now let's let's be clear, it's not actually lost. It's sitting in the database, but you can't Yeah, I think you, know, you, you use WP all import I think to pull it out. I mean if you that's technical though. Yeah, because let's all totally know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. It's actually pretty amazing. I, I'm I'm continually shocked for uh, there's so many like super techie musicians who can do anything you want in you know um, all of their 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 musician stuff and their Ableton's and their whatever and then they're like you're talking about their website and they're like Wait, what's that I don't I don't know what that is like how do I click that button I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> they come That's back with the they come back with the eternal question can't you just. Can you just just make it just Can't make it just, work? Uh, yeah, it should be simple. Where right? there's uh, there's a knob, right? You turn the knob, just the right amount, and Wait, are you telling me that <laughs> this goes to eleven? Wait, Wait. I, I have I have more questions suddenly. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, and on that note, <laughs> and look at that. <laughs> oh, oh. 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 <laughs> one second. We would be remiss if we didn't let people know where to find Sarah, who is our all things band. Uh, she now she now is also all things Zeke because she has to act. I mean, someone needs to do the work at Zeke, and so <laughs> somebody's got to. Uh, For Steve, a minute, I keep Steve in line. I mean, yeah, Steve. Uh, Steve yeah. has hired her to do all the work there. But uh, yeah. Sarah, where can people find you online? I am on the Twitters, down there at, at Sarah Weefold. Awesome. Yeah, buddy. And oh, we'd also be remiss if we didn't point out that my band's website is AliciaMurphyMusic.com. Okay. Awesome. That, Don't go there now because I'm in the process of redoing it. It's like literally like <laughs> first theme. Yeah. I'm doing that right now. I have a theme. It's already just kind of. I gotta switch out that custom post type show thing. So. I would be remiss to say if I didn't mention that we mentioned that we said the word remiss. Four times. I would be remiss. I would be. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, Steve's team, the Clippers, lost yesterday. Oh, oh, <laughs> if you could, if you could send him, oh, he laughed. send him a nice, send him a nice note on the Twitters. 
just I'm telling him that you feel for him. Heartbreak so Hotel up in yeah. there. He just he just bails on you. He doesn't. He degas that. He's right crying. Now. That's about it. They make sure you go to our website. Cinemanicetweet.com. And yeah, send him a nice tweet. He's Zengi on Twitter, so make sure you do that. Send him uh, flowers. Make him feel better. We're yeah. also gently making... look at his website. <laughs> <laughs> We also use SoundCloud, too, so make sure you go over and subscribe to that. See you all later. And YouTube. Rock on! Bye. 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 See ya.